Welcome everyone to Simply Bitcoin. We break down the news from Twitter, the daily fail, meme review, software releases, hardware releases, websites by plebs or plebs. Drop us a like, subscribe. Joining us today is fellow Bitcoiner and designer Pedro. And before he uh, before he joins us in on with the uh, before he joins in on the fun with us, we're gonna head to the numbers. Let's do it. Yeah. Number time. At the time of this recording, the block height is six hundred ninety-seven thousand four hundred twenty-eight. The Bitcoin price forty-eight thousand two hundred seventy-five. Chain rewrite days nine hundred fifteen. Total public lightning capacity. 2340.84 that's a new all-time high for that sats per dollar 2071 and the blocks to the halving 142572 all yeah, right I, i've been avoiding saying this phil no i think i hinted at it uh, a couple episodes a, a couple episodes ago but dude uh maybe it's going exponential dude that was a huge jump the Lightning Network capacity from 2,315, which was yesterday, to 2,340. That's a lot of corn, dude. That's a big jump. What's going on there? That's a lot of corn. I mean, hey, look. People are starting to realize that the second layer works, you know? And maybe maybe there's some bigger players that are starting to look at the second layer and saying, hey, this works. <laughs> so, Man, do you think the shit coiners are, you know, they cry every time it just keeps going up and think a little tear just comes down there? No, oh. they they just they 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 just mint another shit coin and pretend mm. that it's the, and pretend it's the next bitcoin, and then mm. find a whole new set of brand new bag holders. <laughs> Speaking of shit coins, I got a I got a glimpse at the script, so I know what the daily fail is today, and it's amazing. <laughs> Anyways, Phil, it's time for it. the daily fail. All right, so I'm digging through the the typical you know the typical channels that I have for looking for fail trash. And I actually, I stumbled upon this other thing called Baby ETH, okay? Which was a, a total other scam shitcoin that was shilled by, by some rapper guy, like Lil Pump or something like that. Anyways, okay. So I, I, I start digging into that because I'm like, all right, let me, let me look into this. And somehow I find this thing, okay? Baby token. So I'm like, what? Like WTF is this? Baby token is digital money for modern families. What the fuck? A new way to earn income, get healthcare services, and save for your child's future. Well, we're, we're going to dive in and we're going to scroll down because th th this just gets funnier. But I, I really, I really want to know who these 30 million families are that are just stacking a bunch of shitcoin. <laughs> I highly and, doubt that. I know. <laughs> Trust me, I know. I don't. Okay, so here we go. Make money. Get paid by famous international brands for content creation and online marketing. Okay, does that have to do with their token or... You know what, Let, let's move on. So this is supposedly their, their customers. Bullshit. Yeah, I know, right? Like Bayer, Similac, Pampers. All right, so you know, you got, you got a whole bunch of good names. Okay. But wait. But wait. This is just going to get weirder and weirder, okay? So I want you to think right now, like, th there's already healthcare apps and everything like that, and people already take USD. You don't need a special token to get these services in any way, shape, or form. These, this service does not require any censorship resistance or decentralization, okay? But I'll continue. Stay healthy. So here you go. You know, they've, they've got, you know, picture of the doctor, the kid. Yay, everybody's happy. Wonderful. Okay. This is how you know. I mean, as if you didn't already know you're going to get scammed. But this is just like when you start to become absolutely certain that this is totally full of shit. Save wisely. Start buying crypto and prepare big future for your little ones. Not prepare a big future, but prepare big future. Right? Just anyways, <laughs> prepare big future. But, but this is the fun part here. This is where they're showing you Bitcoin's annualized returns. What does that have to do with healthcare <laughs> and a baby token? And wait, th this gets th this like this gets all a lot weirder. A hundred dollar baby fund gives a hundred worth of crypto for every newborn. Gives a hundred dollars worth of crypto to who? And for what? I, like, I don't get it. Like, what are you doing? And then, okay, so here, 
Get 8% annual return on your Bitcoin deposits. Ah. Uh, paid deposits. in Bitcoin. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Uh, so you buy a package. You buy a package and your money disappears. Now, okay. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. Maybe maybe your money doesn't necessarily disappear. Maybe it just dies and, and doesn't really go anywhere. Okay. But, and not that I really care about this, but sometimes, sometimes I like to go on coin market cap and, and just take a peek at like what their metrics say. So this, this shit coin can only be bought and sold on one market. I've never heard of hand Bitco, but I'm sure somebody has, and I'm pretty sure it looks like all the other shit coin markets that all look like Binance. Anyways, what are these confidence ratings? Okay. Coin market cap algorithmically compares reported volume of exchanges against our data model. The confidence indicator indicates the level of confidence we have that the reported volumes are accurate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So th this is more than likely just some fricking, you know, some, some like whitewash scheme. It it's, it's just pure garbage. And guys, you don't need a token for healthcare services. You don't need a token for any of this stuff. None of this technology needs to be its own money. And this was just absolutely funny. And I enjoyed digging through this ridiculous use case that they had for owning their... They pay you in Bitcoin. Why are you holding their token? I don't get it. Just buy Bitcoin. Nico. Yeah, man, listen. Uh... <laughs> Up the babies. Typical Ponzi scheme. I didn't know these types of shitcoin scams were still around. Like, it gives me 2017 vibes, dude. I right? thought they moved on to NFTs and uh, the, the the fruit <laughs> yielding yam, sushi, all the all the above. But I'm I'm gonna stick to what I've been saying, Phil. I'm really concerned about the shitcoin developers because they're running out of names. Right? We know they already use kids token. They just took baby token. What are they going to do? Are they going to eat? I'm guessing teenage token, perhaps, you know, hasn't been used yet. I don't know. Just speculation there. And another thing that I want to, uh, I want to point out is if you look at the baby and the doctor FaceTiming, right? It'd be kind of freaky if your doctor just, how you doing? And then not only that, who's holding the phone with the baby like that? Have you ever asked yourself that? Okay. You know what? Hold on, before we get Pedro's take, take a look at this, okay? So th this is their, like, th th I, I just want to pull up their use cases so that, that we can all understand this. Because, you, look, maybe we're just we're just toxic, okay, Nico? We don't, we don't get it. We're not open-minded. None of us are open-minded here in Bitcoin. You know, all of this can be money. You're just a fool. Here we go. So these are the use cases. Payments. Products in the marketplace. Telemedicine services. Group purchases. Okay. Rewards. Watching ads, content creation, product reviews. What does that have to do with healthcare? Anyways, this is good here. Premium features, super saver rates. Uh, this is the best one. Somebody maybe can drop it in the comments and let us know what this is. What's a super mom status? It's and so social credit. <laughs> <laughs> I had no clue. Uh, and, and online jobs. So again, nothing that has to do with healthcare, I, yeah, sorry, man. I just, I, I had to peek that last part in there. Man, is Klaus Schwab behind baby token? Is it part of the Great Reset? Who knows? That definitely looks like some, some world, what is it, the uh, the World Economic Forum? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Those people are bad shit. Anyways, Pedro, what are your, what are your opinions on the baby token? Well, it just looks like another great waste of resources. Uh, <laughs> Great illustrators and good designers working for something that's probably going to be dead in a year, but whatever. It could also be that it's just like another tool of normalization to get people into like tokenize their babies or something. Yeah. Hey, I like true. that take. And good call on the design because I have to admit it is a pretty nice site. It is friendly, you know? And they have a lot of resources because they aren't they giving away $100? I'm sure it's locked somewhere and you're never going to be able to access, but they're pro probably very well funded. Yeah. Well, you know what? You know, to your point about funding, they do have somebody who claims to be... Uh, here, let's, let's take a peek. Why not? Let's have a look at who's behind something that isn't required. All right, so they've got this guy over here, uh, Vlad uh, Vladimir Sinistin advising on partnerships with global financial institutions and he claims to have been 
an executive at Goldman Sachs. Just a heads up, when someone wears gold uh, sunglasses in their profile pic, <laughs> that is usually not a good sign. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, in the uh, you know, then you've got the, uh, I don't know who this guy is. I've never heard of him before either, but senior researcher at some university and uh, co-founder and this guy over here, Sean Sunman, who co-founded three things I never heard of either. Who's the leadership? Go, go to the leadership. Oh, okay. You want you want the uh, the leadership? Okay, I'm sorry. Right, I want to see Klaus Schwab picture. Oh, there no, he is. no, it's it's uh, Almir uh, Salomov, who's responsible for the blockchain ecosystem development and token sales. So, in other words, sales. <laughs> <laughs> man, that was funny. Um, well, yeah, man, just another shit coin. Um, and there might be some nefarious activities behind it as well. Definitely a Ponzi. Um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, you don't need baby token. Just buy Bitcoin. It's much, much better. Uh, but anyways, Phil, it's time for... The Daily Meme Review, sponsored by... Citadel 21. All right, everybody, the meme for today is brought to us by a fellow plebe. Let's check it out. At, no, you can go follow him. Definitely go give him a follow, because he makes great memes, obviously. At BTC Road to one and this meme was recommended to us by someone in our telegram group which you definitely have to join to give us memes to review because it's a meme review click the link down below but anyways let's get to the meme by max power btc infinity divided by 21 million lightning ball okay anyways laser eyes until fiat dies fiat system me my bitcoin stack yeah, man, it's it's amazing. Uh, you know, while we're living through uh, you know this pen pen <coughs> great reset, uh, you know, I feel protected by uh, you know by being in Bitcoin and not being not using the money of these fucking insane people running the world right now, <laughs> using this invisible enemy as an excuse to lock anyone uh, lock everyone down. And for that, Phil, I'm gonna give this it this amazing score of the OG. Satoshi bit the Bitcoin chicken. The one that died, unfortunately, because he can't cluck anymore, right? I took him on a skiing trip and... I guess that hurt his feelings. He doesn't want to cluck, you see? It sucks. But anyways, he served as the first Satoshi, paying him his respects. This is the last time you'll be shown. Yeah. What about you, Phil? That ski trip totally messed him up. Totally. Um, so I, I thought it was I I, I thought it was hilarious. I, I really enjoy Simpsons. I love Simpsons. I grew up with the Simpsons. I'm an oldie. So you know what? I'm gonna give this my retired obsolete. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's an old Cobavault wallet. This was the uh, the first gen Cobavault. Oh, nice. That's what it gets. Gets a hardware wallet. Shout out Li Xing, shout out. Yep. Um, and what about you, Pedro? What would you give that meme? I will give it a high score. I like it a lot. I feel very much like that today. And I love the fact that it shows Homer Simpson, such a dumb character, even him can stack. I'll give it a candle, not a green candle, not a red candle, but an orange candle all the way up. Uh, uh, we've never gotten an orange candle, sweet. It's not a green candle. It's not a red candle. It's an orange candle. Man. Like it. That's an amazing score. Amazing score for an amazing meme by a fellow pleb. Recommended to us by... Man, I have to give him the credit. All right. It was recommended by M... Uh, no, V. Malar. V. Malar. Shout out. Thank you for the awesome memes. Definitely keep dropping them because they're amazing. But anyways, Phil, it's time for... The Daily News, sponsored by... Crypto cloaks. All right, everybody, we're going to start out with some stats. I got some stats. Very cool stats. Anyways, let's check it out. Check it out. This tweet by Documenting BTC. Still doesn't want to come on our show because he's too busy documenting <laughs> BTC. Anyways, Africa. At, at some point, he'll just tell us he doesn't like us. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, I'm not coming on because I don't like you. How about he that? Told me, he told me he's not coming on, and then he gave me a follow. It was weird. Anyways, um, <laughs> but keep doing you, bro. Um, Africa now has the largest amount of Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer trading volume in the world, even more than North America. That makes a whole lot of sense. Why? 
because they don't really have the infrastructure there. You see the same thing in Venezuela, right? You see the same thing in South American countries, right? Where the the legacy financial infrastructure is not as readily available as you see in North America or in Western countries. So there's a lot of peer to peer volume, right? You see this in Nigeria and you see the government failing to stop it because how do you stop peer to peer transactions, right? How do you stop someone willingly, you know, handing over their worthless fiat, which the government could just debase and print more of if they just want to give that to, give that for bitcoin how do you stop that you can't right you can't stop the signal but anyways let's check out the stats sub-saharan africa super high over 15 million i'm assuming this is a day uh north america still pretty high asia pacific latin america western europe eastern europe middle east north africa and australia new zealand australia new zealand you got to keep up i know you guys are small countries you know what you know why it's because they're doing all the fucked up shit with the lockdowns. That's why the peer-to-peer -peer volume is low. No, I'm just I'm kidding. It's a bad joke. Anyways, moving on to the next stats before I get our before we get Phil and Pedro's thoughts. Uh, this is a tweet by Max Kaiser. I saw this earlier. I think I saw this in an, in a in it was a, it was an article. My actually my dad sent it to me. He's like, you thought this would be interesting. And then I saw Max post uh, <laughs> post it. So I'm like, okay, this is important. I have to cover it. Anyways, uh, Max says the new global superpowers. I think he's absolutely right <laughs> because the 32% of the Nigerian uh, population is stacking some sats, right? Uh, I think when the this whole monetary reset happens, I think a lot of them are going to be very happy. But anyways, let's check it out. How common is Bitcoin and shitcoins? Share of respondents in selected countries who said that they own that they used or own. Uh, Bitcoin and shitcoins 2020. I'm assuming this number is much higher now. Um, as you see, we've shown you many times on the show, the amount of Bitcoin users coming onto the network is literally gone exponential. Very similar to Lightning, by the way. So uh, I'm assuming these numbers are higher, but anyways, check it out. Nigeria, 32%. Vietnam, 21%. Philippines, 20%. Turkey, 16%. Peru, 16%. Switzerland, 11%. India, 9%. China, 7%. It's crazy. You know, China's really hostile, but still 7% of the population. That's that's amazing. U.S., 6%. Germany, 5%. Japan, 4%. We got we to gotta pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers, Phil. Those are rookie numbers, bro. Those numbers totally need to go recommend. higher, man. But anyway, still Nigeria, 32%. Now the question is, Phil, it's interesting, right? Because Nigeria's currency, I think it's called the Naira or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because, and no, in Venezuela, I know that number's in the, in the 20s and 30s as well. I'm surprised that there would be really no way to know, I guess. Um, but it's like, are, are people there buying it to escape inflation or are they buying it because their because their local situation necessitates them to opt the fuck out? It looks like it. That's my explanation for this. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think it's a bit of both. Right. I, I definitely think it's a it's a bit of both. Right. They're 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 opting out. But at the same time, their local currency. I mean, it, it isn't even worth holding. And to be perfectly honest, you know, uh, I. I I forget what the numbers are, but over there, it's like more likely for somebody to have a cell phone than like, you know, like a computer or something like that. So it's not, you know what I mean? It, it's so much easier for them to just simply send the Bitcoin transaction than it is to, you know, really do, you know, really do anything else. And not only that, but I also think that lightning would be really well suited, you know, for, you know, for what, for their situation, you know? So, hey, it's, you know, it. I think that what happens is, is that, you know, necessity is the mother of all invention, right? And, and what happens is, is that once you find yourself in a situation, well, you absolutely need to come up with a solution. Otherwise, you know, it's like sink or swim. And like these people, it's like, okay, you know what? We're in a bad situation and it's time for us to swim. And look, Bitcoin really is the answer because again, it's, it's the, to me anyways, I believe for them, it's the censorship resistance and the inflation um, and the protection against, you know, the, uh, the government inflation on their end. But I think those numbers are also contrary to what some people were painting as a narrative because I, I recall somebody trying to paint the narrative that Bitcoin's only for rich people and it's only for like, you know, rich nations and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, but that peer to peer volume isn't coming from quote unquote rich nations. Yep, it's true. Yeah. And I completely agree with Phil. You heard it here, guys. Don't sink. Buy Bitcoin. <laughs> Swimming is amazing. What about you, Pedro? What do you think about all this? Uh, curious to know where these stats come from. Obviously, they're really positive, but I might take a little contrarian approach here and just 
we're bombarded with statistics. Everybody can come up with numbers. And I saw on the on the, um, the little notes on below of the second uh, chart you sent that it was from a sample of maybe a thousand and three thousand people. I never got the call. I never got one single call asking me if I was into crypto or Bitcoin. So I'm still waiting for my call so I can add my name to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's you're right. Awesome. It actually is like a very 1,000 to 4,000 respondents per country representative of online population. You're right. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sample and they extrapolate from it. Yeah. And to Pedro's point, actually, okay, to Pedro's point, a lot of stuff is developed where it's not actually tested in real world use cases. They simply extrapolate the values and expect that it will work as designed. And quite often, it's a massive failure because a lot of times people don't expect the human factor. So, you know, it's just something to uh, something to think about when we look at those when we look at those numbers, right? Absolutely, I, I know for a fact it's missing some countries, right? Like I know for a fact, right? Yeah, like why isn't Venezuela there? Yeah, why isn't Venezuela there? You know, I know for a fact that Venezuela has more than twenty percent of the population in 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 you know in either using you know shitcoin tether or bitcoin either or right i've spoken to many people on the ground there so it's very interesting but anyways i think pedro hit the nail on the head but before i get to the next piece of news i'm gonna tell you two tales right a tale of destruction and a tale of flourishing a tale of a hopeful future let's focus on the destruction tale first because it's a destruction of a very evil company very evil company that we know, right? They they like to censor transactions. We know that they cut off, you know, the OnlyFans, right? They, they they don't like certain things, right? So, anyways, let's show, uh, you know, their idiotic move uh, first, and then we'll show you the other side. Uh, so, Visa buys an NFT of digital avatar with the Mohawk for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Now, check this out. This is what they bought. Now, Phil, check this out. Okay. I'm going to take a screenshot, right? And yep. boom. Wait, wait a second. Did you just make an NFT? Uh, does that oh, mean but, but I get, wait. if I, could I get $150,000 now to buy some more Bitcoin? Like, cause this is that how it work. I don't understand. Well, first you have to sell it. Yeah. Oh, but, well. Yeah. So anyways, uh, Visa Inc bought a digital avatar for $150,000. In a show of support for a burgeoning era of investment in the realm of shitcoins, I'm not even going to say Bitcoin because it just means shitcoin, shitcoins and blockchain technology. That's when you know they fucked up when they say shit like that. Um, anyways, uh, stupid fucks. But anyways, moving on to the hopeful side, right? Visa's doing it wrong. Michael Saylor is doing it right. MicroStrategy acquires 3,907 additional Bitcoins with proceeds from ATM facility sales, right? I would be surprised if Michael Saylor doesn't live under a bridge at this point. But anyways, let's check out the tweet from the man himself. <laughs> it's funny because he, he started with laser eyes. <laughs> now look at that shit. My <laughs> <laughs> head's gonna split in half soon. <laughs> this dude's so down the rabbit hole, bro. It's just, <laughs> I feel like if you meet him in real life, he'll just, <laughs> Anyways, uh, I am buying Bitcoin. Like, he is literally the act of buying Bitcoin. It's not even a person anymore. <laughs> Man, the sailor, the Chad sailor. And oh, oh, look, Chad. he has a lightning bolt next to his name, dude. This guy's all in. He's lost it. Anyways, uh, <laughs> like us. But again, we don't have billions of dollars to stack. Right. But we stack kernels, like Phil said. This guy stacks fucking cornfields. Anyways. MicroStrategy has purchased an additional 3,907 Bitcoins for $177 million in cash. It's nothing. In cash at an average price of 45000 per Bitcoin. As of 8 uh, 2021, here's a signal. We hodl. <laughs> I love how he says hodl. We hodl 108,992 Bitcoins acquired for $2.9 billion at an average price of of twenty six thousand seven hundred and sixty nine per corn, right? Could you leave us some, please, <laughs> for the rest of us? That'd be nice, Phil. I I okay. So look, really, all I care about is that I front ran Michael Saylor. <laughs> that that's all I care about. Okay, yeah. there you go. He may be the smartest guy in the room now, but we were there before him, and there were people before us. <laughs> So you know what? We all front ran him. <laughs> so. 
what, what do you think about this, Pedro? Is it? Do you think? Do you think like we're thinking? It's not fair. He's taking all the corn, bro. No, take it all. I mean, I'm uh, at this point at these prices. I'm 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 straight out of dollars to buy anything. So let him have his turn. I was here before the room was made. So let him be the the richest guy in the world in the room. Okay, fair oh, enough. Yeah, yeah dude, like that's that crazy. Thing. That's crazy, man. We front ran Michael Saylor. At least I did. Yeah. Like, man, four or five years. That's pretty nuts, dude. And I remember, you, there, yeah, yeah. But you can tell how anxious he is because he's been here before. He he's he he has told us about his tales of Argentina. He's he knows when there's a debasement coming. So that's why he's doing. He doesn't even care about the forty five k. Is this is like, this is nothing for him. It's crazy, you know. It's like it's like a hundred dollars for us is like a hundred and seventy-seven million dollars for him. It's fucking crazy. Anyways, uh, let's check out this awesome article that came out today. Shout out to Samson Mao, which we've had on the show, and Adam Back. This was a major step. Blockstream raises two hundred and ten million dollars, now valued at three point two billion. What did they raise that money for? Let's check it out. Bitcoin infrastructure firm Blockstream. Hat by, I just want to shout out this. This article is written by Nick Can't Mind. Anyways, uh, Bitcoin infrastructure firm Blockstream has announced a two hundred and ten million dollars Series B financing round led by investment management company Bally Gifford and Ifinex. Uh, the raise now puts the company at a three point two billion dollar valuation. Again, congratulations, Adam. Congratulations, Samson. You guys yep. fucking deserve every goddamn penny. Uh, some of the money raised will be spent on advancing Blockstream's, here's a signal, mining, uh, Bitcoin mining products and services like Blockstream Energy. The new mining infrastructure they are building is planned to be used in many partnerships such as their collabor co collaboration with Square where they are developing a solar powered mining facility. I think that's a lot of noise, but the signal again is that they're developing their own ASIC. Um, that's kind of a big deal, right? Why is that a big deal? Because the majority of ASICs, right, developed right now, Bitcoin ASICs, are coming from Chinese companies, right? So that's who is funding the R&D. The fact that, you know, Blockstream is, you know, putting their foot on the table or joining the ring, right? I think it's a big deal. I think it's kind of scary, right, that the majority of ASICs are developed by Chinese companies. I would love for Western companies to, a Western company to jump in there and kind of, you know, develop their own ASICs. However, from what I've heard, Right, and I've spoken to many people about this. Um, it is very difficult to develop your own ASIC in the West, right? Because China has, you know, essentially they're so far ahead in the, man the, the manufacturing of it. So I'm really interesting to see how many terahashes their their first product has, right? And how it compares to essentially Bitmain, you know, the Big Daddy, the S19, the S17, you know, and the and the still alive S9, it's still profitable if you got cheap enough electricity. So I'm very interested to see how they do. Uh, but anyways, I know Phil. Phil just had his, his first mining experience, so I'm very excited to ask him how he feels about this. Phil. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I think it. Okay, so I want I want to go back to the the original point there about the um, uh, the collaboration with uh, with Square, right? And the the whole solar powered mining facility. I mean, we're still at the point where all of that stuff is incredibly inefficient. That's just a bunch of stuff to placate the you know the eco warriors trying to save something that they can't possibly save because they don't understand it. Klaus Schwab. Klaus Schwab. That's right. You need to tax yourself and kill yourself because we need to save the world for the people who aren't going to be there. That's what's important, okay? It's that's the polar true. bears, bro. It's the polar bears, man. Come on. Come on now. Come on. It's true. That's true. We do need to save them. Kill yourself and tax yourself. <laughs> they need to live. Anyways, <laughs> um, I, I'm pretty sure that they can live and we don't have to do that too, but that is not very profitable. But going back to this, man, like that, that is huge, right? That's huge for Blockstream. I, I'm definitely, you know, like I, I've heard the whole argument, you know, because this is the shitcoiner argument, right? That like Blockstream is like this evil, you know, this evil agent that came in and, and like sabotaged Bitcoin and all this stuff and made it so that you had to build extra layers so that it would actually work. Oh, uh, no, we can't say that. You know, like, look. That's, I mean, if you've actually ever inter interacted with Adam or Samson, you know that those are not the people that they are. <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy to see them get the recognition that, you know, that I think that they deserve. And, and it's nice to see that a Bitcoin, you know, a Bitcoin company is, you know, is building in this way. And not only that, but getting some massive recognition and being, look, you know what, getting to sit at the big boy table. Absolutely. What about you, Pedro? What are your thoughts on Blockstream developing an ASIC? 
I think it's amazing. I would like to have as many ASICs and as diverse as possible, the same way that I collect hardware wallets and don't really trust anyone, but I trust them all together. I would love to see the same thing happening in the mining. I also just started mining recently, although it was at this point, I'm just testing myself and trying to see if I can get to the spec hashes on my S9, but having something like this, I have no idea where they're going to produce it because I don't believe that Canada really has the infrastructure to to produce this, but it's amazing. And it's also congratulations to their gigantic valuation. It's I remember when there are like five people in a, in a little office close to Vancouver or something. It's, mm. uh, it just attests to the fact that these are the companies that are going to be the, the ones to dethrone all the Googles and the Facebooks in a couple of maybe Maybe a decade, maybe less. Absolutely, man. Dethrone all those fucking evil ass fucking companies and put Bitcoin companies in there, you know? Uh, hopefully they will be better. I think they will because I think Bitcoin is tied to the truth, you know, by proof of work. So hopefully that becomes a reality. But anyways, Phil, there was a software release today. Why don't you tell everybody about it? You scared me. Software releases. All right, we've got Zap Android version 0.5.0 beta that was released. It's a lightning implementation so fast, it zaps the fuck out of you. <laughs> it's down below in the show notes. Ouch! I got Yeah, some. I'm not going with the rest of your thing. <laughs> not happening. I'm pushing <laughs> Phil just a little bit more, you know, every day. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, he, he read, he read it. But anyways, guys, before we go, I want to give... <laughs> A shout out. It makes good TV, man, to make you feel uncomfortable. Before we go, uh, <laughs> I want to give a shout out to our awesome, awesome guest. His name is Pedro. You should definitely go give him a follow at Pedro M V P G, and uh, he is a, a UI designer, right? He helped uh, he helped Bisque with their with their design. He also helped Pirate Hash, Anatomy of Bitcoin, and Bitscribble.com. Definitely go check him out. Check him out. He's super talented. Love his work. Anyways, guys, that was the show. If you enjoyed the show, you know what to do. Smash the like button. And of course, if you want to continue hearing the catastrophic fails from the evil people at the World Economic Forum, the shit coiners, and the fiat economists, and the Bitcoin news from the flip flip perspective, definitely consider subscribing. And we'll see you tomorrow, guys, for another episode of Simply Bitcoin. Nothing stops this train. Yeah.